It's Friday, November 3rd, 2023, and I'm Dave Sobel. Three things to know today. The AI gold rush pays. Companies reap 3.5 times returns and salaries surge by 40%. Federal AI blueprint draws industry eyeballs as OMB solicits the public's wisdom. And watermarking, the AI apocalypse, and adult content leveraging AI. This is the business of tech. There's so much data out there, emails and files, and sometimes it's just in the wrong place. Move data like a pro with MoveBot, data moving built for scale. Move terabytes to petabytes lightning fast, even between storage platforms with complete transparency through comprehensive scanning, reporting, and error handling. MoveBot is super easy and works around platform quirks with automatic file sanitization, doc type conversion, moving permissions, and more. With support for over 30 different platforms, including mailboxes, you can move any kind of data anywhere. Want to try it? Get 250 gigabytes free to try MoveBot with no credit card, demos, or calls required by visiting movebot.io. Move data like a pro with MoveBot. According to a study by IDC, businesses are reporting a massive 3.5 times return on their AI investments. The survey of global business leaders found that organizations are realizing a return on their AI investments within 14 months on average. The report also highlights that generative AI drives increased interest and investment in AI, with companies deprioritizing other initiatives to prioritize the technology. According to a study by the Oxford Internet Institute, AI skills and knowledge can increase a worker's salary by up to 40%. The study examined over 1,000 skills and 25,000 workers, finding that AI-related knowledge, such as machine learning and data science, positively impacted potential salaries. The study also suggests that AI will augment work rather than replace human workers entirely, leading to wide-scale reskilling of workers. According to a recent joint report by the World Economic Forum and Accenture, out of 19,000 individual tasks analyzed across nearly 900 occupations, jobs with high personal interaction and non-routine physical tasks are expected to face the least disruption from AI. Research led by OpenAI found that 4% of workers, including painters, carpenters, and roofers, had zero tasks that AI could influence. The report also emphasizes that good quality jobs, which provide steady work hours, upward mobility, fair compensation, and degree of voice, are likely to come out on top in the AI revolution. The research suggests that jobs involving personal interaction and non-routine physical tasks, such as air conditioning installer, teacher, and hairdresser, are expected to be relatively unscathed by AI in the next five to 10 years. Blue collar jobs in particular are projected to be safe and could experience a job boom in industries like healthcare, green energy, high tech manufacturing, and construction. Why do we care? Three and a half times on investment is why we care about AI, but we want to note that those with AI skills will be at a premium and there will be distinct impact on knowledge workers. AI adoption can significantly enhance operational efficiencies, customer service, and cybersecurity, which are key elements of the services provided by IT services companies. By investing in AI technology and upskilling their workforce, providers can deliver more value to their clients, justifying the investment these promise. But more importantly, helping customers leverage the technology will be the real payoff. It's the which industries that we also care about. Understanding which industries will be less affected by AI can help providers tailor their offerings to those sectors and adjust their strategies for industries more likely to be disrupted. Focusing on sectors that require personal interaction may yield less demand for AI-driven process automation, but more for AI that enhances customer experience. It won't be one-size-fits-all, and we like bespoke solutions. The Office of Management and Budget is seeking outside comment on its draft policy for implementing President Joe Biden's executive order on AI. 
The draft calls for federal agencies to designate a chief AI officer and ensure proper testing and safeguards for procured AI solutions. The OMB is accepting comments until December 5th. The guidance aims to help agencies manage the risks and harness the benefits of artificial intelligence. It includes requirements for testing AI systems, creating chief AI officer positions, and implementing risk management practices. Agencies are encouraged to notify individuals impacted by AI-influenced decisions and offer a remedy process. And I wanted to slip in the analysis by the team at AI Snake Oil for you. Their highlights? The order does not include licensing or liability provisions, which are seen as related to openness. It launches a public consultation process to understand the benefits and risks of foundation models with publicly available weights. The order also includes requirements for registering and reporting AI training runs that pose serious security risks. While the order falls short of a total commitment to keeping AI open, it emphasizes defending attack surfaces, promoting competition, and providing incentives for AI development. And while I'm on the Fed, per reporting in the Washington Post, some industry groups suggest the need for a new office to oversee cyber rules due to the increasing number of conflicting cybersecurity regulations. The Office of the National Cyber Director received significant feedback on the issue, including problems caused by duplicative regulations and recommendations for harmonization. Various sectors, such as railroads and aviation, face challenges with conflicting reporting deadlines and requirements. The lack of clear leadership and coordination in harmonizing the rules is also highlighted. Recommendations include creating an office within the White House to evaluate and align cybersecurity requirements establishing a federal clearinghouse, and pausing new regulations until existing rules are harmonized. Why do we care? If there's a chief AI officer, you know there can also be a virtual chief AI officer. The feedback I've been looking at around the EO seems quite positive on the AI developments, and more importantly, they're moving forward relatively efficiently. Announced, open for comment, it looks like a balance of protections and allowing for innovations. Should a White House Office for Cybersecurity be established, providers must be ready to navigate the new regulatory environment. Those offering compliance as a service, cyber policy consultations, or even regulatory change management will all need to watch it. And frankly, anyone in security needs to be delivering those. Let's go to the weekend with some Friday big ideas. I'm tracking a debate in the technology community around the disaster hype of AI. According to Google Brain co-founder Andrew Ning, big tech companies exaggerate the risks of AI wiping out humanity to trigger strict regulation and stifle competition. He suggests that some companies do not want to compete with open source and are using fear of AI as a weapon to push for damaging legislation. While there are concerns about AI development, he emphasizes the need for thoughtful regulation to avoid stifling innovation. He also argues existing laws and litigation in the U.S. are seen as sufficient to hold AI companies accountable. McKenna Kelly at The Verge highlights how watermarks are not a foolproof solution for combating AI misinformation, according to experts. While President Biden's executive order calls for government-led standards on watermarking AI-generated content, some concerns are that watermarks alone will not be enough. Researchers have found ways to break and manipulate watermarks, creating false positives. Experts suggest that a combination of approaches, such as tracking synthetic content and establishing visual markers, will be necessary to authenticate AI-generated content. Implementing these solutions also raises concerns about privacy and more potential risks. And are you ready for a customer service AI use case? This one will make you think. From Insider, Ella Darling, an adult content creator, uses AI tools like ChatGPT to enhance her work on OnlyFans. By using AI, she improves the quality of her photos, writes fantasies, and recalls client details reducing burnout and meeting the needs of more customers. 
Tools like ChatGPT help her develop text responses, and an app enhances the quality of her photos and videos. And additionally, she uses an AI app to summarize her paid Skype calls and another AI tool to refer to real-time details, improving her work's efficiency and quality. Why do we care? I love a good extreme example because it helps crystallize the use in your mind. It's a good headline and thus memorable. Now extract the underlying principle. AI can enhance personalization, quality of service, and efficiency. This is the kind of customer service to consider. You know, this service is a white glove one. I want providers to track tools for information, consider the downsides and benefits, and more importantly, ask the why of regulations and who are asking for them. We've been down this road before, and it's worth considering here too. Thanks for listening. Today, National Sandwich Day. Who doesn't like a sandwich? Want to take my class in January? Navigating Emerging Technologies for MSPs, and the link is in the show notes. There'll be no bonus episode this weekend, and I'll be back again on Monday for more news and comment. Have a great weekend. The Business of Tech is written and produced by me, Dave Sobel, under ethics guidelines, posted at businessof.tech. If you like the content, please make sure to hit that like button and follow or subscribe. It's free and easy and the best way to support the show and help us grow. You can also check out our Patreon, where you can join the Business of Tech community at patreon.com slash MSP radio or buy our Why Do We Care merch at businessof.tech. Finally, if you're interested in advertising on the show, visit mspradio.com slash engage. Once again, thanks for listening to me. And I will talk to you again on our next episode of The Business of Tech. Part of the MSP Radio Network.